Hi, this is Sean D'Souza from Psychotactics.com, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. This podcast isn't some magic trick about working less. Instead, it's about how to really enjoy your work and enjoy your vacation time. This is Three Month Vacation, and I'm Sean D'Souza. As you've noticed, this is the second rerun this month, and it's just been a very busy month. We will get back to normal podcasting and you'll get new episodes right after this one. This one's really cool because it affected me in a way that nothing else had for the last few years. I had this blind spot and I refused to look beyond the blind spot. So enjoy. Once upon a time, in New York's Catskill Mountains, lived a man called Rip Van Winkle. You've probably heard of this story. I heard the story when I was a kid, and I kind of forgot what the story was all about. One autumn day, he wants to escape from his wife's nagging, so he wanders up the mountain with his dog. He hears his name being called out. He sees a man with antiquated Dutch clothing. And this man is carrying a keg up the mountain. He wants help. So they proceed to a hollow in which Rip discovers the source of the noises. There are a group of bearded men who are playing nine pins. Rip doesn't ask how they know his name. But they offer him moonshine, which is a kind of whiskey, illicit whiskey, not legal, and he decides to drink, and then he falls into a deep sleep. When he wakes up, it's pretty strange. His musket is rotting, it's rusty, his beard is a foot long, his dog is nowhere in sight. He returns to the village and he finds he recognizes no one. His wife has died, his close friends have fallen in a war, they moved away. And this is often what happens in business, especially if you've got a successful business. You get a blind spot. You start focusing on what works for you, and then you work at it, and you work at it, and it works even better for you. And the longer you work at it, and the more successful you get, the more you have a blind spot to everything else. Now, almost instantly, you're wondering, where is this going? Focus is supposed to be good, right? And if focus brings success, then what's the problem with having the blind spot? There is a downside, and that's what this episode is all about. It's about understanding that you can have focus and you can have success, but that you can also have a blind spot. In this episode, we're going to explore three elements. The first is the concept of the Rip Van Winkle effect. The second is the opposite, which is the danger of not having that focus. And the third is the solution. How do we solve this problem of focus and not focusing at the same time? Let's start off with the first one, which is understanding the concept of the Rip Van Winkle effect. If you look around you, you will find that a lot of blogs have shut off their comments. Why have they done this? This is not just little blogs, but big blogs and mega-sized blogs. They've just shut off their comments. Why is this the case? The obvious reaction is, well, maybe they've decided that they're big enough, they don't need the comments. But that's not true. Everyone likes to hear back from their customers. Nothing boosts the ego more than having 50, 70, 100, 200 comments on a single post that you make. Remember, when people comment, they also send it off to Facebook and Twitter and every other place. So why turn off that channel? Why turn off the chance for people to experience your blog at a different level? The reason is very simple. 
that group has moved on. So when you look at most of the blogs today, even the really big ones, they have far fewer comments and it's embarrassing. So they have to turn it off. Same thing with Facebook. At one point in time, you could effectively run a business off Facebook. And slowly but surely, that tide is changing. Suddenly, you find that Facebook has all these restrictions in place. Suddenly, there are too many people looking at your stuff, but not the people that you want. And so, the tide keeps changing. But if you made a success out of blogging or, say, Facebook or any other medium, then it's very simple for you to focus on that medium and not pay that much attention to everything else. So suddenly someone comes around and says, hey, podcasting is a big thing. And you look at them with skepticism because you've tried podcasting four or five years ago and now this stuff, whatever you're doing right now, it's still working for you. So you get into that moonshine mode. You fall fast asleep. And that becomes your blind spot. And this is true even for us at Psychotactics. We had a blog going around 2003 before blogs became popular in 2005. We dropped it. We had podcasts going around 2008, 2009 before podcasting became popular. We dropped it. We never really stepped onto YouTube or Facebook or Twitter in a big way or even a small way. And the reason why we did that is because we had a blind spot. We had courses that were filling up super fast. I mean, every single course fills up in less than an hour. We've had workshops in New Zealand, in the US, Canada, Netherlands, the UK, and they all fill up almost instantly. And of course, we send out a newsletter weekly. We've done so since 2002 without missing a single week. And we're able to sell products for as little as $9.99 all the way up to $400, $500. So when you look at that kind of model, you say, well, that's good, isn't it? It's great focus, and it is. But the ecosystem is connected. So when we first started out in 2002, if we wrote an article and we published it on another site, we'd get 200 subscribers, yes, for a single article. And then we had the blogs come out and we'd get about 50 to 60 subscribers per article. But recently, with all those comments of the blogs turned off, we'd probably get two or three. And we're talking about really big blogs. You would think that the really big blogs would drive traffic towards you and it's not true anymore. They've had to relook their strategy, we've had to relook our strategy. So focus is a great thing, but things can change around you and you've got to be watching for what's happening around you. And this takes us to our second part of today, which is chasing everything that is around you. The opposite of focus is distraction. Most of us are not very good at focus. We are very good at being distracted. Every time someone comes up and says, hey, here is a new method, they just put the word new, improved, and we're off like a bullet. It's almost like the diet syndrome. The South Beach diet, the Paleo diet, the Atkins diet, the Zone diet, the every single diet. And we think that the next diet is going to solve our problem, but it never does. And it's the same thing for business. If you get into doing, say, podcasting, then you have to be prepared to enjoy it. You have to be prepared to love what you're doing and so that you can do it for the next five years or ten years. When we do our courses, they're very tough. They're very tough for me. They're very demanding for me. When we do our workshops, I'm on my feet for three days. I never sit down. I'm always running around teaching and doing stuff. And even these podcasts, I've already told you before, they take between three to four hours to produce, even though they're just 15 minutes or 20 minutes long. 
And if you want to make a success of anything, you're going to have to be willing to be there for the long run. But as we found out, the long run can kind of change over time. It can twist and change and suddenly blogs are no longer fashionable and Facebook is no longer fashionable and maybe podcasting will not work out as effectively as it does today. It might still be good. It might not be as effective, which is where the third part of today's podcast comes into play. And that is the concept of spinning plates. In the first section, we saw the concept of focus and how that focus really helps, but also creates a blind spot. And then we saw what happens when you don't have that blind spot and you're chasing everything in sight and not achieving a lot. Well, where's the happy medium? Where's the happy mix? And it's a concept called spinning plates. And spinning plates is just simply this. It's like someone you've seen at a fair. They put one plate on a stick and then they start to spin it. And it goes faster and faster and faster and faster until it reaches a certain speed. That plate and goes to the next stick and then starts to spin that plate and that reaches a certain speed. But as the second plate is spinning, the first plate starts to lose some of its momentum, and then you have to spin that, and then go back to spinning the second one, and then you can put on the third plate. And this is how you're really running your business. If you don't want to have that blind spot, if you don't want to fall asleep by just focusing on a few things, then you've got to use the spinning plates method. So we started out with a newsletter and we've done that week after week after week since, as I said, 2002. The second thing was we have courses on a regular basis every year maybe. So an article writing course is held once a year, headlines courses held once a year. But during the year there are several courses and that keeps the customers coming back. And once we settled all these courses and we have the agenda and the syllabus and the system in place, then we were able to add on workshops. And once the workshops were going, we were able to add on podcasts. And people often wonder, how do you manage to do all these things at once? Doesn't it get you really frazzled? And the answer is no. To someone who's not used to spinning plates, it looks like an extremely difficult task. But to someone who's already adept at spinning different plates, it's just a routine thing. As routine as you playing parent and teacher and driver and chef and whatever you do in a day as you spin those plates. And it's just a matter of getting that act together. Once you're able to spin plates, you can focus on your current activities and then add new activities as they come along. And you don't stay like Rip did, stuck in one place forever, and then the whole world changes around you. But on the other hand, you don't start chasing every butterfly that crosses your path. The spinning plates is your answer. So let's summarize what we've learned today. Well, we've already summarized, haven't we? You need to focus, but you also need to be distracted. To be able to get the best of both worlds, you have to get that focus really strong, get that rolling, and then add the plate. And once you start spinning plates, people will wonder how you're able to manage so much. But there is no secret to it. The people that struggle the most are those that are continuously either too focused or too distracted. You want to be where the spinning plates are. So what's the one thing that you can do today? The one thing that you can do today is to sit down and work out what are the things that you are focusing on and what are the things that are generating the most revenue for you and make you most satisfied. And then you look at what's changing around you and then you add just one more plate 
And that's what I did last year. We were not podcasting. As I said, we were podcasting back in 2009 and then we stopped. And then I added the podcasting. And though it takes so much time and we have courses and we have workshops and we're going to events and we're doing all that stuff, I still have time for my three-month vacation. I still have time to spend with my niece who I mentor. I still have time to go to the movies. I still have time to cook. I still have time to be part of the membership site of 5000 BC to do a painting every day. Are you getting tired yet? And that brings us to the end of this podcast. If you haven't read The Brain Audit, then it's required reading for pretty much all our courses, all the workshops. Make sure that you read The Brain Audit. It's at psychotactics.com slash brain audit. You can also find it at amazon.com and you can download it for your Kindle or your iPad. If you've already read The Brain Audit, then join us at 5000bc.com. That's the membership site of Psychotactics and where you can ask me dozens of questions. There's a lot of information, but more importantly, you can ask specific questions related to your business. It's almost like consulting. And I'm there several times a day, unlike other sites where the person in charge is never around. So that's 5000bc.com. There is a waiting list, so make sure that you join sooner than later because you have to wait a little while before you get in, but you have to wait. That's me, Sean D'Souza, saying bye for now. Bye-bye. Still listening? Well, here's the Rip Wen Winkle. I hate that name. I struggled through the entire podcast trying to say Rip Van Winkle. Oh. Anyway, the story is that podcasting is our rip effect in the sense that I turned a blind eye to podcasting. Paul Wolf from 5000 BC, which is our membership site, he kept talking about podcasting. and He's been talking about it for the last three or four years. And every time he brought it up, I would say, well, podcasting is so 2009, 2010. That's because we stopped around then. And I've had the most fun doing these podcasts. It takes such a lot of time, but I don't know how... I've stayed away from it for so long or turned a blind eye towards it. It's just been a fabulous comeback. And in a way, it was good. It was good because back then I was doing a different kind of podcast and I really was just putting information out there and not enjoying myself as much as I do now. And I didn't have this whole concept of music and I didn't have the software that went with this music and the microphones that go with it, and all the stuff that I have today puts me in a much better position, puts me in a more enjoyable situation. There's also technology that's improved. So much has changed, and I'm glad I went to sleep for four or five years in a way. I've grown since then, and podcasting is so much more fun. I think that if I'd continued to do podcasting, I might have stuck to the old legacy system that I had in place and it wouldn't have been so much fun. It would have just been something we turned out week after week. So this has been a great experience for me and I'm just so glad I went to sleep for a while. So there's your little blip from Psychotactics.